Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com and we're here today with lesson number 14 in our incredible new tutorial series where you're learning how to do 3D graphics and 3D animations in Visual Python. What I'm going to need you to do is pour yourself a nice strong cup of black coffee. That is straight up black coffee, no sugar, no sweeteners, none needed. That is your go juice. Go get you some. What I also need you to do is fire up your most excellent Visual Studio code. And as you do, as always, I want to give a shout out to you guys who are helping me out over at Patreon. It is your encouragement and your support that keeps this great content coming. Those of you who are not helping out yet, look down in the description. There is a link over to my Patreon account. Think about hopping on over there and hooking a brother up. But enough of this shameless self-promotion. Let's jump in and talk about what we are going to do today. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you my solution to the homework assignment that I gave you in the most excellent lesson number 13. And I believe, if I remember correctly, that was to create an analog clock face and to have the 12 major ticks that go around for the hours and then the 60 minor ticks that go around for the uh, minutes. So you guys let me know how many of you were successful in doing this. If you were, leave a comment down below. I am legend with a double chest bump. And how many of you folded up like a cheap Walmart lawn chair? Of, you, of those of you guys who folded up like a cheap lawn chair, how many of you did the project actually turn into one giant huge cat rodeo <laughs> trying to get all those different tip marks in the right place? What I'm going to tell you is there is the easy way and there is the impossible way. There is no hard way. If you tried to do it the hard way real quick, that was going to become the impossible way. But I've given you enough information in the earlier lessons that you ought to be able to figure this out by now. Out. But if you tried and failed, that's okay, because at least you tried and now you see it's a lot harder than it looks. I mean, what's bad is if you just go through always watching me doing it and copying it, it just looks easy when I'm doing it. The trick is for you to go off and be able to do it on your own. And that's where you start really growing as a programmer and growing as an engineer. But I digress. Let's come over here and let's see if we can scale skin this old cat. Let's see if we can skin this old cat. So what we're going to do is we're going to come up to our file explorer. We are working in the most excellent vPython folder. We will click there and then we will click new file. And I think I'm going to call this my clock dot py. The dot py is kind of important and boom, a brand new fresh Python program just waiting to be written. Well, if we're going to do animations, what do we need? Who is your friend? We need from vPython. vPython is your friend, Visual Python. From vPython, import everything, which is the star. And then also, who's your friend? Mr. NumPy. So I'm going to import Mr. NumPy as NP. And uh, you cannot see, man, you're probably getting really mad at me there. Okay, there it is. From vPython import star import numpy as np. And then what we need to do is always make sure that it doesn't change that to numpy, which it seems to want to do sometimes. All right, guys, clue number one in doing this. The only way this is going to work is if you do parametric designs. Down in those commands that are going to be making tick marks and making clock faces and making all that kind of stuff, you can't be putting numbers in because certain parameters depend on other parameters, so we need to do parametric design. So all of a sudden, I'm thinking of a clock face, okay? I'm thinking of a clock face. That is going to be what? It's going to be a cylinder. A cylinder has a what? A radius. So I'm going to put clock R, and I'm just going to set the clock radius to 2, okay? That is a disk, and so that's also going to have a thickness. So I'm going to say clock thickness is equal to I'm actually going to set that related to clock radius. So <clears throat> I want like I want it to be a certain ratio. So whatever the clock radius is, let's say the clock thickness would be that divided by 100. I have no clue whether that's going to be reasonable or not, but we'll just look at it and then we can 
tweak a parameter without messing up our other parameters. Now here's the problem. If you're just going in here like a cat rodeo and just trying to do everything without relating it to the other things, then when you say, oh, it needs to be thicker, you make it thicker and then you mess up everything else. You need to be thinking in terms of parametric design. So there I'm going to have that. I'm going to have that. Uh, let's see what other things would I need there. Let's just let's just kind of start there. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is say clock face is going to be equal to that is going to be a cylinder and that cylinder is going to now this is what you have to think. Remember how normally it puts a cylinder in the X Z plane, right? This is X this is Y and this is Z. It normally puts it in the YZ plane coming like this. So if I just do a normal cylinder, it's going to be pointing off to the side. I want it to point towards me. So I'm going to go ahead and set up an axis. So I'm going to say an axis and it's equal to a vector. And instead of having pointing in the X direction, I wanted pointing at me, which is the Z direction. So I'm going to point at zero in the X direction, zero in the Y direction, and one in the Z direction. That should make it pop up looking at me. So right off the bat, we got to be thinking about what direction we are uh, pointing and where we are in this three dimensional space. Okay, let's do a color equal color dot. Uh, no, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make it a vector. Okay, I'm going to make color equal to a vector. And I really want that pretty aqua. And that aqua is, is green and blue. So I'm going to go zero on the red. And then I'm going to put one on the green. And I'm going to put one on the blue. And we'll come back and tweak that later. So I've got a color. I've got a radius. I've got a thickness. And then I've got it pointing the right direction. Let's go ahead and maybe run this. Let's go ahead and put in our while loop while true. When is true? True. True is always true. What are we going to do? Pass. And this just has keeps the Python program a lot live so our graphic doesn't die on us. So let's go ahead and try that. Let's just see if we have a reasonable looking clock face here. So we're going to come over here and we're going to run this thing. Boom! That looks pretty good, don't you think? Okay. I don't like the color. Whoa, that is crazy. What did I do? Oh, 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 oh. I know what I did. I know what I did. All right, this is what I did. I set up clock thickness here, but I didn't apply it. Okay, I didn't apply it. So I need to come over here and I need to make the uh, length equal to clock thickness like that. And that should fix that. The other thing I didn't like is I thought the color was too, it was too blue. So I'm going to cut the blue down to about 0.8. We kind of got more of a cyan than an aqua. And what I wanted was I really wanted that perfect kind of turquoise aqua. It's my favorite color. All right. So now let's go ahead and let's see if we can run this. Kill the old one. Okay. Now what's a couple of things that you notice? You notice that it is pointing towards me and not pointing this way. So we got that axis in there, right? And that looks pretty good. I think that's a little too thin. I think that's a little too thin. So we're going to come back over here and now I just change that parameter, right? Instead of divide by 100, let's just divide by, let's say 50. <coughs> so I think that looks pretty good. I'm not even going to check that. I think that will be okay or we will get it on the next round. Now, what else are we going to have besides a clock? We're going to have a tick. We're going to have a small tick and we're going to have, a, we'll call it a major tick and a minor tick. So I'm going to say major, major tick length. I'm going to say major tick L for length. And we'll just make that, let's say, I want to make it in terms of the radius. I'm going to say clock radius. And let's see, clock radius divided by 10, maybe clock radius divided by 10 would be a good length. Okay, clock radius divided by 10. Okay, and then the major tick 
width, okay, so like how wide is it, the major tick width, let's make that, I kind of want, mm, I'm trying to think, so that is, the width is going kind of this way around, and so that should really be uh, the clock radius, like how far is it all the way around the circle? Well, it's 2 times pi times radius, so 2 times np dot pi times clock radius. That's the length all the way around the clock face, okay? And then how wide do I want the little tick mark? Well, I want it kind of like how far is it all the way around? Well, I think I would want it about a 500th of that. So I'm going to divide by 500. I can come back. Once I see the tick mark, I can come back and change this. Okay. But what you've got to see is the bigger the clock, then the wider the tick mark needs to be. So that tick mark width needs to be related to the circumference of the clock, which is related to the clock radius. Does that make sense? How far is it around a circle? Well, it's 2 pi r. 2 times pi times r. And then I want to go 1 500th of that. This is really important, guys. Don't make the tick mark width its own parameter. Make it related to how big the clock is. That, my friend, is parametric design. <coughs> okay, so I've got a tick length, I've got a tick width, and then I've got a major tick thickness. And the thickness should be, I'm just going to make it the same thickness as the clock. So I'm going to say clock thickness. And so if the clock is thick, the, thick, the tick mark will be whatever thickness the clock is. Now we'll have to come back and tweak this in a minute. But those are some pretty good parameters. All right. Now let's make our tick marks. Now this is kind of what you've got to see. And maybe I should come over here like this. And we should go to the old drawing board and see if we can think through this a little bit. Okay. And so let's see if I can kind of draw a clock face here. I am terrible at drawing circles. Okay. But now what you got to see is this tick mark would be like here. And then this tick mark would be here. And then I have one like here, and I have one here. Okay. Do you see the whole thing about these tick marks is they are, you've got to do the axes on them because you, you, you know, each one is pointing a little bit different. Well, what direction is it pointing? It's pointing in the same direction is that vector that we have been spinning around. Remember in the earlier homework we would spin a vector around? Well imagine spinning a vector, that vector that we were spinning around was at a certain axis. Remember it was an x value of the radius times the cosine of the angle. Do you remember that? And then the height, the y value, you had the x and the y, and the x was the radius times the cosine of the angle, and the y was the radius times the sine of the angle. And then that gave us the x value and the y value for the axes. Remember that? Well, this should be at that same axis. This should be at that same axis. So we should be able to get the angle of those tick marks right. But when we create them, we have to create them with an axis. Then we also have to create them with a position. But it's what's pretty cool, the position is that same x and y value. Okay, at least that'll get us real close. So we put it in an angle based on that axis of these the cosine and the sine and then the position would be there also if you stop and think about it so let's see what we can do with this big mess now it's going to be 
you know, I'm not going to say it's going to work the first time, but we should get pretty close the first time. So we need to do what? We need to automatically put all those around. So we're going to do a what? A for statement. So I'm going to say for, and then I'm going to say, uh, what am I going to be stepping through? An angle for theta in, who's your friend? Mr. NP dot, uh, our friend is Mr. NP dot lens space. Okay. And what we're going to think about this is starting here, we're going to start here and we're just going to spin that thing all the way around. How far is spinning it all the way around? 2 pi. So we're going to start at an angle of 0 and then we are going to go 2 times our friend Mr. NP dot pi. So we're going to go all the way around 2 pi. Okay. And now how many steps do you want to go? Now this is where you're going to, like you're thinking on a clock, it's 12 and you say that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 12, uh, 11, 12. It doesn't work that way because you're starting here and then you're going 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it's sort of like you're starting 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and then you got to go 13. Right. Stop and think about that. If you start at zero and then go from zero to one, that's really two tick marks. So all the way around, you got to do 13 segments. So you're going to go how many steps? You are going to go 13 steps. Try 12 and you'll see that it doesn't work. And then think about it, you know, because you're kind of counting the zero position and the 12 position, you're counting that same position twice, which means you've got to have 13 if that makes sense, right? Now, what are we going to do? I'm going to make my minor tick, and that minor tick is going to be equal to a box, okay? And uh, let's let's see here. So we're going to go all the way around. And we're going to create 13 tick marks. The first one and the last one will be on top of each other. But now the real action happens here with the axis. And the axis is going to be equal to a vector. All right. And then that is going to be just like, remember, I'm going to go back to what we did last time just to remind you that you should know this, okay, that when we have a vector spinning around, the x value, when we have a vector spinning around, the x value of the axis is L cosine times the angle, and the y value is L, which is the radius, right, uh, L times the sine of the angle. And right, we're taking that angle from 0 to 2 pi all the way around. Okay, so we're going to come back and try to code that up with a vector. But now what you got to remember is we are not going around, we are going around the x, y, right? We're going around the x, y. No? Yeah, we're going around the x, y. I believe we are. We'll look and we'll see if this works or not, but I think that it's just going to be the x is going to be our radius. What's our radius? clock r, okay, our radius is going to be clock r times, what was it, cosine, or np cosine, I better get that up where you're going to see what I'm typing, okay, so we're going to have clock r times the cosine np dot cosine of what angle, well, it is this theta up here, right, it's theta, like that. All right, then what do we have? Then we're going to have the y value is going to be the same thing. So I will snag this and I'll put it here. Only on the y value, it is going to be sine. And then the z value, the z value is going to be zero because I'm not spinning around in z. I'm going around the x y plane. If I'm thinking about this right, it should be right. All right. Now let's go ahead and uh, now let's give it a color. So let's come up and say color equal color dot. Let's start with white just to make sure that we can see the whole thing. And then we are going to need to make the length uh, of it equal to now, what did we say the length was? It was major tick L. 
Okay, length is equal to major tick L. And then the width is equal to major tick width. And then the height is equal to major tick thickness, I think is what we called it. And let's make sure that that was right on that third one. Major, ooh, <laughs> look at that. I said major rick. No, major tick. I hope you guys were yelling at me over that. Hopefully you didn't just blindly copy that mistake. So major tick T, major tick T. Okay, so now I have its size. Now I need to give it a position. Okay, now the position is also going to be, the position is also going to be a vector. So I'm going to say position is equal to vector. And I think it should be the same as what we did. It should be in X and Y. It should be the same as the axes, right? It should be this vector. It should be the cosine. It should be the sun, and I really hate it how it does that. Let's see if I can do it this way, yeah. So I'm going to copy this vector here because the position should be the same as the direction for this particular setup. So I'm going to copy that, and then we're going to come over here, and we're going to paste that vector here like that. This is one big, huge, crazy thing. What is the chance that we haven't made a mistake? It's okay if we didn't think about this, right? Let's see what it did because we're doing parametric design. If something's not right, we'll tweak it. But we should at least be able to see what's going wrong if it doesn't work. So let's give this a try here. Okay. Ooh, major tick width is not defined. Okay, because that was an uppercase W. So that is important right here. Right here, I made that a small where that W should have been uppercase. All right, let's try it again. Wow, look at that. That's kind of interesting. Okay, so unexpected. All right, it looks like the thickness is about right. Okay, but why are those things like twice too far out there? Their position, their angle is right like this is... Let's look at what's right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Did I do this right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. The tick marks are right, but they are out twice too far. Their position is out twice too far. This is a cylinder, this is its radius. So what did I do on position? And this actually was the major tick. I'm gonna fix that major tick, even though that doesn't really matter. This has got me absolutely stumped. <clears throat> what is wrong with what I am thinking? The clock radius, oh, I bet I know what. I bet I know what. When I made that, look at this, okay. When I made the clock, I didn't actually apply the radius, so it used the default, okay. So, whoa, that scared me, so I'm going to say, <laughs> right, I never set the radius of the clock, so it made it the default of one. So radius of the clock face is equal to clock R, like that, okay? And then I also really wanted that thicker, so I want the, I want the clock thickness 
to be the clock radius divided by, let's say, 10, because that was just way too thin for me. And now that should still be okay that the, uh, I got, yeah, the major tick thickness then is the clock thickness, is, which is gonna adjust. So you see when I just change one, I don't break the whole thing. So also I was glad we were going, both of them were in the same plane, right? Those tick marks were in the right plane. It's not like the tick marks were going one way and the clock face was going the other way. So let's try this. This is actually getting pretty, pretty close, right? I kind of like the way this is looking. All right, so now this is where we kind of see that we have a problem. Okay, so I'm confusing width and height. So what I call width, what I call width there should be the height, right? Because like they're, they're this wide where they should be that thick. So V Python is to, is is using width and height opposite of what I'm thinking, and it's kind of arbitrary. But we can just see that that's what happened. So I need to change width and height, and so that would be the major tick length is right. The major tick W will be T for thickness, and the major tick thickness will be width, like that. And that should fix that little thing, I do believe. Let's give it a try. Okay, now that's looking more encouraging. All right, now here is the crazy thing, okay? You can see that we are off by half. And it has to do with the way vPython defines the zero. A cylinder, it puts the end of the cylinder at zero. It puts the end of the cylinder at zero and goes from there. So the end of the cylinder is zero to where for rectangles, it puts the zero in the center. And so what you can see is, is that this is zero at the edge of the face, at the edge of the face of the, uh, the edge of the face of the clock is zero, but then the center of the rectangle is zero. So what I want is I want that clock face to not have its edge face be zero, but its center be zero. So I need to scoot it back a little bit and I need to scoot it back in the, I need to push it back so that would be negative Z. How far should I push it back? Just make up a number and trial and error. No, I should send it back by half its thickness. So let's watch this. <clears throat> okay, so when I make the cylinder, I'm going to give it a position now. Okay, this is the clock face. I'm going to give it a position and the position is going to be equal to a vector and that vector is going to be I'm not going to move it in X so it's going to be 0 in X I'm not going to move it in Y it's going to be 0 in Y but I'm going to move it back by and push it back by how much don't just put in a number what is it going to be it is going to be the clock thickness divided by 2 and if I'm thinking about this right, this should work. It is going to be, uh, let's get back here. All right, it's going to be minus the clock thickness divided by two. Now I think that should put those tick marks exactly right. All right, so let's stop it. It's no, it's going to put them. It's going to put them exactly right up and down with the clock face. So let's watch that. Okay, now look at that. You see how they're lined up perfectly, right? Now we see two problems. One problem is the way we defined it, it is putting the center of the tick mark along that outside edge. It is putting the center of that th tick mark along the outside edge. And what I want is the outside of the tick mark to be along that outside edge. Okay, I want the outside of the tick mark to be along the outside edge of the circle. 
But before I do that, you can see that the tick mark is exactly the same thickness as the cylinder. Therefore, where they overlap the tick mark, you don't see. So I need to make that tick mark a little bit bigger so I can see it. Now, you don't go in and just change it arbitrarily. We come back and that is the major tick thickness. And what I'm going to do is, uh, or that that is... Again, that is what's called width in these dimensions. That's the clock thickness. And so I'm just going to say times 1.2. So however thick the clock is, the tick mark is going to be a little thicker, and then it's going to be sticking out. So let's just make sure that works. So i got to get it where I can see it. But it should stick out the same amount on both sides if I'm thinking about it right. Boom. Okay, do you see how it's sticking out on both sides? And then I've got a nice tick mark there. What is the problem? I am aligning the center of the tick mark to the outside of the circle. And I don't want to do that, right? I don't want to do that. I want it to come in to where the outside of the tick mark is on the outside of the circle. And the way that we're going to have to do that is we are going to have to come down to the major tick and we're going to have to go to the position okay the position and what I want is not to go out by the radius because when I go out by the radius that puts the center of the tick mark at the edge of the circle so I want to go out radius minus half the length of the box so it's going to be the radius minus the tick mark length major tick length, so I'm going to get that major tick length, and I'm going to subtract half of that off the radius, divided by 2, and I've got to put my parentheses in here, right? So now, instead of going out and having the center of the box at the edge of the circle, I'm going to subtract off of that radius half of the thickness of the tick mark, that will put the edge of the tick mark at the edge of the circle. And then I've got to do that in both places. So I'm going to take this. Let me show you that. I'm sorry you didn't see that. You see I take, let me show you, we are adjusting the major tick. We're in the box there. And we come all the way out. And the position, we're just changing on the position vector. We're making the clock radius minus the major tick length divided by two. So we're going to take this and we're going to copy it. And we've got to do that over here as well. You don't use clock R anymore. We're going to make it slightly smaller. Now, I really think this is going to work perfectly. I really do. Let's try it. Guys, you got to understand what I'm doing. Stop and start the video again if you don't understand. Boom, look at that. huh? Okay, look at that. All right, so now you can see the edges line up perfectly, right? And the tick mark is a little bit thicker. The tick mark is a little bit thicker than the face, so we see it. I'm gonna make it, now that I see that it's lined up right, I'm gonna make it black. And then also, I think those tick marks are too short. I think they need to be about 50% longer. So I am going to come in and I'm going to make these tick marks black. And so that's the major tick. I will come out here on the major tick. And I'm going to add color equal color dot black. And then I said that they needed to be longer by 50%. So I have the major tick length is equal to the clock divided by 10. What if I say divided by 5? No, divided by 7. Let's say divide by 7. Let's see how that looks. I'd like them a little bit thicker. And so the tick, uh, the tick width, I divided by 500. I would like them a little bit fatter 
So I would divide by a smaller number, 400. So let's take a look there and see how this looks. What is this nonsense? Color equal color. Did I set two colors? Okay, so that was uh, major tick. It doesn't like how I did major tick. Oh, I see. I'd already put a color in and then I added it. So I've got to change it instead of adding it again. Rookie mistake. Did you guys see that? Did you see that? Where is that crazy color? There it is. So we'll make it black here. I didn't want to start with it black because then you couldn't see it against a black background. But now that I've got everything else good, let's make it like that. Boom. I really like that. Do you see how they're fatter? Okay. And they're longer. So I really like that. Now we got to go in and we got to do the minor tick marks. And what I would like is I would like them the same, only just half as big. Okay. I'd like everything the same, only half as big. So now what would be the easiest thing to do where we created this major tick? Let's take that for loop. Let's take that for loop and let's snag it. Okay, and then what we are going to do is we're going to put it here and now we're just going to adjust it. So for theta in NP lens space, we went from 0 to 2 pi all the way around. And then how many to get 12? We did 13 because the first one you count twice. So then for this one, if we want 60, what should we make it here? It should be that we do 61 tick marks and that way the first one, it will make the first one and the last one and the first and last will be on top of each other. All right, that should get them right. Now, what we need to do is up here, we have these three parameters, major tick length, that major tick thickness and major tick width. And what we're gonna do is we are going to copy that and then we're going to make minor ticks, right? We're going to make those minor ticks. So major will become minor. And then we'll just snag that. And then make these minor. And make these minor. All right. So now the length, I think, should be, I think it should be, uh, let's say I'm just going to kind of try divide by five or divide by 10. Mm -hmm. I'm going to divide by 12. So there'll be a little more than half. There'll be a little bit more than half. And then I'm going to make them the same width and the same thickness. Now what I've got to do is in this second for loop where I have major tick, I need to make everything minor tick. Okay, so where I had major tick, I need to change it to minor tick. And then everything should be right. Okay, so this would be minor tick. This should be minor tick. And then also here, Okay, now also you got to see that since they're a different size, you've got to adjust them differently. And so instead of subtracting off half of the major tick, we need to subtract off half the minor tick on both of those. Okay, could it really be that simple? Could it really be that simple? Let's see. Boom! Look at that. Now let's see. We start here and then I've got one, two, three, four, five to the major. That really looks good. Okay. Now I do think I want my minor ticks narrower because they're kind of, they don't look like minor ticks. They look too much like the major ticks. All right. They look too much like the major ticks. So I think I'm going to make them a little thinner. The minor ticks, I want to make a little bit thinner. So that would be the minor th minor tick. Okay, this is how tall they are. 
and then this was this is the one that I want to make them thinner so I'm going to divide instead of by 600 I'm going to divide by a bigger number instead of dividing by 400 I'm going to divide by a bigger number 600 and that should make the ticks thinner all right so now let's give that a try boom I really like that I really really like that I think that is a good 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 clock face okay I think that is a really really good clock face look at that okay guys man if you couldn't do it and then you just did it by watching me do it there you got to go back and you've got to watch this video again and you have to understand it do you see how easy it is when you do it the right way what was the right way let's go back and think about some of the things that we did that were right number one is we use parametric design that I just sat down and before I started even writing any code I started thinking in three dimensions okay I've got a clock face it's going to have a radius it's going to have a thickness now I also thought which way do I want it pointing if I would have just used the default cylinder it would have been pointing off to the right and then I wouldn't have been able to see it and every time I ran the program I would have to spin it around to see it so what did I do I put it in the X Y plane using the axis statement meaning that the face was pointing in Z right then I didn't just use parametric design I had parameters depend on other parameters so I didn't just go in putting in numbers I put numbers in terms of the core physical object which was a cylinder of a certain radius and a certain thickness and then I tried to put as much as possible as relating back to those foundational parameters all right so I didn't just go in arbitrarily making the thickness this much and arbitrarily making the length this much so like if I came in and let's just see if I made the clock radius one here and uh, then came in and ran it I completely change it and it doesn't break it you see it's still everything still looks properly proportioned because everything tied back to that radius and so as the radius got smaller all the tick marks got proportionally smaller and I didn't break the model okay that is what you've got to see you've got to understand that you've got to understand parametric design and you've got to start understanding how to think in three dimensions and also you've got to go back on this lesson and that other lesson you've got to make sure that you understand this axis concept where I am moving this thing around and I've got a radius and then I'm spinning it through an angle okay you've got to understand that so man before you go on I would really recommend if this isn't perfectly clear and if you can't do this by yourself you've got to go back to lesson number 13 watch it again watch this again and get to where you can do it by yourself I'm explaining it very carefully and very methodically but you've got to understand it now I struggled in college I never understood three-dimensional space because the professor was just going boom 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 and throwing up equations and I couldn't visualize in 3d I'm trying to go nice and slow so you can think through it and understand in three dimensions but if you're going to be able to do 3d simulations you got to think in 3d in particular you've got to understand that cosine and sine axis business that I explained and the cosine and sine position business that I explained and so I really 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 encourage you to go back and watch these last two lessons again all right but I will be moving on to give you a homework can you imagine what the homework is our friend Mr. Clockface Mr. Happy Clockface what does he need he needs two hands he needs just two not three he needs the minute hand and he needs the hour hand and what he needs is is the minute hand going around and the hour hand going around all right now what you can't do is you can't have the minute hand go all the way around and then the hour go an hour and then the minute go all the way around and then the hour go another hour no the minute and the hour need to be moving at the same time 
but just the minute hand is moving 60 times faster than the hour hand. Now, you don't have to make it show the right time, but you just have to have it going around in the right ratio. So, you know, you don't want to have it going really where it goes one tick every minute, because if you did that, it's not going to be very much fun to watch. It's going to be painfully slow. So you can just have it running faster, but you have to have the minute and the hour hand working correctly in sequence. Then if we wanted to make it slow down to be a real clock, that would be really, really easy, right? That would just be changing one parameter in our model, but we got to add the hour hand and the minute hand, and then we have to have them spinning properly. You now have your homework for lesson 15. Let the games begin. <laughs> Let the games begin. I hope you guys can do this. I really do. I actually think this hand, moving the hands is probably going to be easier. I think it's probably going to be easier than this one was. But hopefully after you saw this one, it sort of makes sense. Okay, guys. This is Paul McWhorter from toptechboy.com. Uh, if you like this, be sure to give us a thumbs up. If you've not subscribed already, make sure to subscribe. And when you do, ring the bell so you'll get notifications of my future lessons. And you guys, share this on your social media. The world needs more people that know how to code and know how to be engineers instead of people sitting around watching silly cat videos. Paul McWhorter, toptechboy.com. I'll talk to you guys later.